Hey everyone, Ryan here at Plague Size Studios. Welcome to an electricity themed episode of Explained. Today we are talking about guitar pedal power supplies, all the critical specs you should pay attention to when you're buying new or simply hooking up your pedals at home, and some other cool features that maybe you should keep an eye out for if you are buying new and you're looking for a new solution to power your pedal collection. This video is brought to you by Chariotone and the Centura Professional Overdrive. Touted as the most faithful and affordable replica of the legendary stomp box which inspired it, the Centura is offered both fully assembled or as a kit, with an enclosure available in multiple matte and gloss finishes. Order yours at the link in the description below. So when I say power supply, obviously I'm talking about stuff like this. I'm sure most people at home have something similar to this one spot, or maybe if you have an older multi-effects unit or maybe some synth equipment, it might have one of these big bricks on the end of it. A lot of manufacturers are getting away from this, fortunately. Um, or if you're just using a regular amplifier or maybe a floorboard unit, it'll just allow you to use this regular standardized three prong. I think this is C13 to NEMA 15.5 P, I don't remember. It's some spec. Fortunately, they got that standardized so we don't have to worry about it. But we'll be covering all those little ins and outs and the things that you should be concerned with as a pedal owner. The first of which is AC versus DC power or alternating versus direct current. No, I'm not talking about the legendary Australian rock band. We're talking about electricity. As you see, everything that comes out of your wall socket is coming out as alternating current, meaning the electrons and the electricity flow are actually flipping directions back and forth at a set rate. Here in the States, that's 60 times per second or 60 hertz, whereas elsewhere in the world, you'll see as low as 50 hertz, depending on the region. But you see, that's a problem for small analog guitar electronics or even a lot of small digital stuff because this is expecting DC, direct current, electrons flowing one way, whether we're talking about resistors, capacitors, op amps, integrated circuits, these little chips and parts and PCBs are expecting the electrons to move in one direction. That's how it operates. So if you hook up an AC power supply to this, you're gonna have a bad time. And that's precisely what I did about two weeks ago. You might've seen in my community post, made a little bit of an oopsie. If you've made a similar mistake yourself, you are undoubtedly familiar with the white smoke of death and god awful smell that ensues after you plug an AC power adapter into something that's expecting DC power. But fortunately, this circuit actually had a safety diode. That's the first thing to be destroyed. You can replace that and the rest of the circuit will be unharmed, assuming that you don't like overload it with 240 volts or something. And that's why I was able to send it off. It's getting repaired as we speak. But I've been playing guitar for better half of my life at this point, and I still made that error. I knew better, and if I'd paid attention, it wouldn't have happened. So definitely make sure you have a DC power supply for DC pedals and AC for AC pedals. Because part of the problem is the physical connectors. There goes the brick. Part of the problem is the physical connectors are pretty much identical. They fit in each other's sockets. And that's a problem that's been more or less rectified in all other DIY areas, but we're dealing with standards that are, you know, better part of a century old in some cases when it comes to guitar. So a lot of this stuff just isn't going to be changed. It's too widespread. But a good indicator is if you have a big wall wart or a big brick, like I just threw on the floor a moment ago, then it's probably AC. But always read, make sure that it is a DC power supply if that is indeed what you need. The next critical spec is voltage, and the vast majority of guitar pedals and multi-effects units run on nine volts. So aside from converting AC to DC, one of the jobs of this power supply is to step down that voltage coming out of the wall socket to nine volts. And voltage is one of those things you wanna be more or less dead on what your pedal recommends. Most of the time, undervolting isn't going to be dangerous. It can be in prolonged periods for you know really sensitive electronics, but overvolting is definitely bad if the components can't handle it. You will see sometimes, like on this Fortin Roach splitter, that it can actually handle anywhere from nine to 24 volts. And that's a common thing with a lot of boost pedals. Line drivers, TC Electronics has a, a similar headroom on some of their older distortion and op amp pedals. But unless it specifically says that, or you do your research and the manufacturer says, yes, it can handle this range of voltage, go with whatever it is rated at. It does have, you know, plus or minus 10, 15% fluctuation that it can handle. 
but that's one of those things that you want to be dead on if possible. Another rating you might find, but it's certainly less common than nine volt, is 12 volt. And I have one pedal that's rated for that. That is the Moore Radar Cabinet Sim. And in that case, it's actually safe to undervolt. And that is directly from the mouth of the manufacturer. So it can handle nine volts. It sounds pretty much identical as far as I can tell. So they may just be using the extra voltage for headroom or some safety precaution. But you will see that every now and then. You might even see 18 volts. I have a lot of electronics that can handle nine, can handle 18. For instance, the 18 volt mod on EMG pickups to give them higher headroom, less compression artifacts. You might see that in some pedals as well. But the general rule of thumb is if it says nine volts, give it nine volts. And if there's a headroom concern or you want more boost out of a certain pedal, then you can always do, do some research and see if the circuit will allow that. The third important specification is current draw or amp draw. In this case, this one spot can output up to 1700 milliamps or 1700 one thousandth of an amp because when we're talking about small electronics like this, one amp is actually a pretty big unit. So it makes sense to divide it up. And when it comes to stop boxes like this, generally, you can estimate between a 200 to 300 milliamp draw. A lot of the times they will over spec it um, on purpose. That way you can always daisy chain more than you might actually think if you do the straight math. For one of my pedals, the more Ocean Machine, this actually is rated at 500 milliamps and I kind of believe it based on my experience with it. But the good thing about amperage is you just want more than your pedal is rated for. If you give a pedal the wrong kind of electricity, it has no way to convert it. If you give it too much voltage, it's going to use all the voltage it's given because it has no way to step it down internally unless you have dedicated hardware to do so. And well, none of this does. But when it comes to amp draw, any kind of electronics is only going to use what it needs. So even though this is rated at 1700 milliamps, it's only going to sip 300 or 500, whatever it might actually use. And that's why you can daisy chain or take this connector and run a splitter that turns this into five, six. I've seen like 10. I wouldn't recommend that many, but you can run multiple pedals off of one power supply because the voltage stays constant across all of them, but it only takes, say, a couple hundred milliamps here, 300, 400 there. And as long as you don't completely max it out, all the pedals are going to get the power that they need. So when it comes to milliamp draw, get something that is bigger than you actually need. And a lot of the times when it comes to these bricks, they will be over spec um, like this is 100 milliamps. And I, you know, I can run pretty much every one of my stomp boxes on here and they all work as expected. This one has a dedicated 500 milliamp output that you can run something like the ocean machine or larger effects pedals off of. So something like this will give you a better idea of what your pedals are actually using. But if you have any concerns or doubts, you can always consult the manual and hopefully that will tell you what they are actually using and not just what the socket is rated for. So before you go plugging in any guitar pedals, just make sure you have a DC power supply. If it needs DC, make sure it's AC, just as importantly, if it needs AC, make sure the voltage rating matches up and make sure you have at least, but safely more milliamp draw capability than what the pedal will require. There are some other nice to have features when it comes to pedal power supplies though. In that example with daisy chaining, some people might run into hum or noise issues. And even if they have a perfectly grounded system and there's no 60 cycle hum, nothing to do with their own home's wiring, uh, you can encounter that if you have a particularly noisy pedal and it can affect the rest of the signal chain. And that's where stuff like isolated outputs happen. And this kind of looks like one. This is marketed as an isolated power supply, but this costs like $35. And if you're paying under $50 for a power supply, I can about guarantee you it's not isolated. This is better than daisy chaining because it still is individual outputs, but it's not the same as having a dedicated isolated power supply you'll find from MXR or Voodoo Labs, etc. And you do pay a prettier penny for it, but if you've already got an expensive pedal collection, if you're running something a little higher tier than mass produced boss pedals, you know, you're running Strymons or Friedmans or whatever you got, it is worth it to make sure your pedals are getting not only a clean, consistent power, but it's not affecting or being interfered with by any other particularly noisy pedals in your signal chain. 
Before I wrap up, there is actually one more watch out to be aware of. I've personally never had this be an issue in my time playing guitar. I didn't even know this was a potential issue for the first five or six years and never managed to you know, uh, damage a pedal or anything. But if you use other audio equipment, perhaps older um, equipment, or maybe you're into synthesizers, I hear a, a couple of those still use the opposite standard. So you might notice this symbol on your pedals. And what that's telling you is the center pole on the power supply is negative. See, that's pointing towards a center colored in circle. And the barrel or outside is the positive side. You can see it's pointing towards kind of this half circle. And that determines the polarity. And you wanna make sure it is center negative for pretty much every pedal that I deal with. I've never seen a center positive pedal from a mass manufactured company. Not to say that there couldn't be some mad scientists out there that's selling handmade boutique pedals with center positive jacks, but make sure before you know you are slap happy and plugging stuff in if you've never done it before. But if you're using pedals from the likes of Moore or Boss or MXR or even someone as relatively small as Fortin Amps, it's not something you really have to worry about. The important things, AC versus DC, make sure you have the right one. Make sure your voltage rating is on point. Make sure your current draw rating is above what you need. So if you need 500 milliamps, give it some headroom. And if you do have hobbies that kind of cross over, make sure you are using a center negative power supply. And that's pretty much it. After that, not a whole lot to worry about. If you have a high dollar pedal board, it's worth looking into isolated power supplies. I personally like them for cable management just as much as I do the isolation part. I think the daisy chain stuff is pretty ugly, <laughs> but uh, if you don't care about that, then it probably doesn't matter a whole lot to you. So I guess that does it for today. Any questions, comments, as always, please leave them down below. If I don't know the answer to it, I'll try to point you to someone that does. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time. Bye.